Hey everybody, how's it going? My name is Juan, I am Just One Reader, and this is the Stranger Things book tag, which was created by Sarah Sunbeams, I believe, and I just adored this TV show. It's a weird sci-fi fantasy combination of Steven Spielberg meets Stephen King, and it's just really great, and I think if you are a bookish person or a bookish lover, you will find something to appreciate and enjoy in this TV show. Um, so uh, the tag is just really fun. It follows diff the different stages of the TV show Stranger Things. And um, yeah, before I get on with the video, I just wanted to um, say uh, a short disclaimer that I have noticed that it's very common for me to give the same answers for every question of every book tag, and I just repeat myself over and over and over again. So trying to avoid that, I am just going to choose books from the books that I have read in 2016, and uh, those are the ones that I'm going to choose for this book tag. So that being said, question number one, epic intro. The opening sequence of Stranger Things is amazing and really grabs your attention. So, name a book that grabbed your attention from the first page. And I chose a book that I read earlier on this year and that I haven't talked about a lot. And it's actually a very well-written book that I really enjoyed. And um, the narrator is just wonderful. And I think that the first paragraph completely draws you in. And the novel is The Crimson Petal and the White by Michelle Faber. This is a historical fiction novel set in Victorian London. And it's really atmospheric. And I'm going to read you the first paragraph because something that I adored about this book is the narrator and how he is like a city guide for the reader. So you as a reader become a spectator but also you're kind of immersed as the narrator takes you hand in hand and introduces you to, to the characters and uh, shows you around. So it starts like this. Chapter one, watch your step. Keep your wits about you. You will need them. This city I'm bringing you to is vast and intricate and you have not been here before. You may imagine from other stories that you've read that you know it well, but those stories flatter you welcoming you as a friend, treating you as if you belonged. The truth is that you are an alien from another time and place altogether. So I loved that beginning. Question two is Dungeons and Dragons. Name a fantasy world that you would like to experience yourself. And this is going to sound weird, but I'm going with um, both tourist theme park attractions uh, in the novel Swamplandia by Karen Russell. They are Swamplandia and the World of Darkness. This novel, as I mentioned in earlier videos, was incredibly dreamlike, and I found this places, Swamplandia and the World of Darkness, to be um, just so imaginative and rich and wild and weird that it felt like um, like when you wake up from a dream and you you feel like, man, I wish I could go back to the dream. I wish I could visit that place that I dreamt of. I wish I could go to these places. I know it's impossible, but it's so infuriating and frustrating that it's so inaccessible to me. And um, I adore that because that means that the writing was so unique. So moving on. Question three is squad goals. When Eleven met Mike, Dustin, and Lucas, it was a mostly perfect team. Name your favorite bookish group of friends. It would have been so easy to pick someone from Harry Potter, but <laughs> talking about 2016, um, a duet, actually, that I really enjoyed uh, was from the novel True Grit by Charles Portis, and... Um, it's a girl, a 14-year-old girl, Maddie Ross, and a U.S. Marshal. His name is Rooster, and he is just such a wonderful counterpart to Maddie. And uh, if you've read this novel, my favorite part was the dialogue and the interactions between these two 
very contrasting characters and I just really enjoyed how funny the dialogue was. Okay, moving on to question four. ABCs and Christmas lights. Joyce Byers goes mad with grief after Will goes missing. Name your favorite mentally unhinged character. So many unhinged characters. I would have picked up Fight Club, but I decided not to use Fight Club for this book tag because Fight Club is Fight Club and it just has a little bit of everything and it could have fit into many of the answers for this book tag. So I'm avoiding Fight Club. So instead I went with the title character from The Vegetarian by Han Kang. She is probably a psychotic character. Most likely um, she is suffering from a very, very, very severe type of schizophrenia. And I am a psychologist myself and I really enjoy how um, this illness, this condition was really um, very interestingly depicted in this book. It, it was so colorful and, and magical and I really, really enjoyed it. Question five, the upside down. Name a book that was the opposite of what you expected. Oh man, I wish this were not the answer, but it most definitely is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by these people because I was hugely anticipating another Harry Potter story, even though I knew it was not going to be probably what I wanted it to be. I did not have that high of an expectation, but regardless, this book just made me stop and just realize that I never want to read any Harry Potter ever again. I just want to treasure my memories of Harry Potter and um, not have anything mess with them because this definitely did and I was just very annoyed with it. No. Whew. Okay, number six, mad scientists. Dr. Brenner likes to get freaky with humanity. Name the freakiest dystopian government that you can think of. This was not very easy because I haven't read a lot of dystopians in 2016, but I guess this is not really a dystopian, but um, oh, weird. something weird happened in my eye. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, this is not really a dystopian, but it kind of could be interpreted as a dystopian and it's Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. I will admit that I did not continue on with the trilogy. I only read the first one, which is Annihilation. Um, so I never really got the full idea. I don't know if it actually is a dystopian or what's up with the government in here, but I definitely got a weird vibe. I'm, I'm just gonna say that. It, it was a weird vibe. And this is probably the, no, not probably, definitely the scariest, most uncomfortable, weird, chilling book I've read so far this year. And it was delicious. Moving on, question seven, Demogorgon. Demogorgon, how do you pronounce that thing? Demogorgon, name a scary bookish creature that you would not want to come through your walls. I could have easily picked Annihilation back up again, but moving on with something else, I chose, uh, what's its name? Hogzilla, Hogzilla from uh, the new and incredible, <laughs> the new and improved Romy Fudge, which was incredible by Julia Elliott. Um, this monster Hogzilla that we see on the cover was just so amazing and uh, I loved it. It was my, one of my favorite scenes in the entire novel was uh, when Romy Fudge and other, uh, I think it's another character or two more characters are on a tree um, protecting themselves against Hugzilla. And it was just hilarious and touching and moving and fucking horrifying. Um, and the last question, question eight, is cliffhanger ending. I mean, let's talk about the ending of Stranger Things. Man, 
Cliffhanger ending, name a book that left you wanting more. And this is probably one of my favorite books of the year, and it is Magic for Beginners by Kelly Ling. I adored it, I loved it, I savored it, I enjoyed myself like never before when I read this. It was delicious, it was just such a wonderful time. I spent such a wonderful weekend reading this. Um, it's a collection of short stories and I just adored it because it's so magical, um, but real, poignant, bizarre, nonsensical and playful, but just so enjoyable and I really enjoyed it. So enjoyable and I really enjoyed it. Man, I should not have said that sentence, but whatever. I am not going to edit it out because that's a mistake and I should learn from it. <laughs> so Magic for Beginners, um, I chose this for this question because I was left wanting more. I just wanted more Kelly Link, more stories, more characters, more weirdness. And that's why I I just went to the bookstore and bought all the uh, all the rest of her of her books because I mean, she's like the best. So guys, that was the Stranger Things book tag. I really hoped that this book tag would have more questions, but it's only eight. What can I do? So uh, thank you very much for watching. I'm looking forward to reading your comments down below and having a conversation about this book or any other books. And I will see you next time.